I do Hello, like that. everyone. Hello, Chris. The fastest hi, hi, switch hi. of them all. How I are you this evening? Switch. Feeling fasty. Feeling fasty. Maybe take I'm a feeling shower. Fasty. Oh, rude. No, I'm you're feeling the like saying, you're the one that insinuating that you're a rather uh, fasty. No, that's not what fasty means. Okay. That's right, you applying so Fausty in an incorrect tone. Today, we're talking about, and I've got to look at the computer because I've already forgotten, magical protection, the very basis of ma basics of magical protection. Now, is remember you always need to practice safer hex, right? So we might go a little bit into that. But magical protection and the light. Like how does that work do people get it right do they get it wrong most of the time you know the basics of magical protection so taking it from the absolute lowest common denominator what are we talking about when it comes to magical protection what is it is it condoms what well, it's it's a magical condom. I'm not saying you should rely perfectly on uh, magical condoms. You should probably still wear them. Um, but no, we're talking about the basics of of magical protection. For me, the basics of magical protection, which sounds silly, um, but mine always starts with good cleansing. Um, so making sure that the space and yourself that you use when you're working is clean. Um, and I don't mean using SIF um, or whatever, you know, international brands you use. Um, what I'm talking about is making sure that you are regularly cleansing your, for lack of a better word, aura. Um, so actually cleansing and getting to the your energetic bodies. So, if you need to first and foremost remember that this isn't the only body that you have you have many bodies that allow you to move between many levels of and i don't yeah i was going to say i don't mean chakras um but what i'm actually talking about is the energetic bodies that you have so the other parts of you that fit within this space and um, one of the first things we do with most of our uh, patreons over on patreon is is actually getting them to map the soul and your energetic bodies so we know that you have a proper understanding of what is going on here um and behind there and and all the different layers that we're talking about so what people forget to do is they think oh okay well I, i've cleaned my space with some smudge sticks things like that and i've i've cleaned myself with soap um we hope and then you know think oh okay well everything's clean you know i've i've anti-backed the whole space um no what we need to be doing is actually adding those energetic layers that clean the spaces you don't necessarily see um which is easy if you happen to be one of these psychics that does see energy on those levels um in which you can kind of you know pop your your astral goggles on and look at the other layers of dirt that are there um and kind of go okay um that's where it needs cleaning that that would make the whole process a lot easier if you're capable of seeing that my uh, what i will go with because i keep my site switched off um it's less irritating that way is to actually um you know just making sure you're going through the motions so we're not necessarily talking about making sure you clean every day um, and triggering your OCD. What we're saying is that you should be able to sense your other bodies. The more bodies of those you can sense, the easier it will be to keep things clean because you will feel dirty the same way that you do when you kind of like, oh, OK, I haven't washed my hair for a couple of days. It's starting to feel gunky. Uh, you know or, or greasy or, or whatever word you would use you know that your hair needs washing um, and you don't necessarily base it on smell 
you would base it on how it feels you know what's different about how it feels and therefore you know start to think about actually well how do my energetic bodies feel uh you know for me i have these these moments where it feels like something's crawling and you look and you're like there's not a fly there so you know for me a lot of those starts that way i'm talking about my younger witch days um of where you kind of start off with kind of sensing the other bodies beyond your physical one um i don't know where liam keeps coming and going you okay i don't know if that's you've Are disappeared you again i can hear you i just can't see you. your screen's You're gone there. black no no don't know can you not hear me you don't know oh dear anyway we'll keep talking without liam because you know that's what we do um like liam says faustiest do we need him probably not um so yeah so what was i saying yeah is making sure a big part of that is your regular cleanses so um i don't mean necessarily every day but what i do mean is that when you start to sense that there is energy building up and that you feel that little bit dirty or, or whatever or before you're about to do a big work or have you know you need a clean house before guests arrive if you're having people stay in your house and you practice witchcraft or or um, any kind of psychic art at home, then obviously you need to be considering, oh, he's back. Um, you need to be considering is, are you keeping that available, cleansed and clean for other people? So I don't know how much of that you actually heard, Liam, but I was mostly talking about cleaning. So from what I heard, make sure you clean your space especially the bits you cannot see be yep. aware for smells and be aware <laughs> for stuff that when you oh he's gone again i don't know what he's doing he's been having lots of digital problems lately um i blame one of you fasty witches i think um but yeah to kind of go to the next part what i try to say to people is those should be the big cleanses that are done on a fairly regular basis but the main trigger for something like that is either you feel particularly dirty um, and therefore need to have a, a deeper a deeper cleanse than your normal cleanse or it's a case you're preparing a space for visitors so you know if it's a case of you know people are coming to visit um or you've got some new clients that you're working with then obviously those are great times are oh, we switched cameras you're going to try I, something different I, i'm now on the backup because the other one ain't working so uh, you know i i okay. heard something about you've got to clean your space especially the space which you cannot see be yep. aware for smells be aware for when you touch something you don't feel right so like bold mold that sort of thing i guess oh my um, god carry on <laughs> and um in general practice safe hex did you go on to that i don't really know i mean i i didn't get as far as pra practice safe hex yeah. but um th that's kind of the next bit what i'm kind of trying to say at the moment is that you keep that when you should be doing these so you know it should be as regularly as you feel it's necessary and then obviously a deeper cleanse if you're expecting clients over or friends to stay the last thing you want to do is after you've just had a big session with a ouija board um is to then have your you know your best friend's children over for the weekend and have not cleanse the spaces um and then them not be able to sleep because they're being haunted for the weekend so you know you kind of need to be making sure that the at the appropriate times you are doing the deep cleanses me my my always my go-to is i try i'm a lazy witch um so for me it's a case of i put my cleanses in the times that i will already be cleansing my clean you know when i'm cleaning my actual body 
So I will put cleanses in for my personal space uh, for cleansing my energetic bodies while I'm cleaning my physical one. So you can tie that into when you're brushing your teeth, combing your hair, um, and you know when you're taking a shower or a bath, um, you know that you put it into those physical motions so that almost in a sympathetic magic kind of way where you're already doing the motion of cleaning something or scrubbing something down that you are then adding the conscious knowledge of the fact that you are cleaning other energetic bodies at the same time so for me i'd, I'd you know because this is what you get with a lot of people which is i'm too busy and um, did what have you done that homework are you doing uh, the spell that you said you were going to do last week I oh, know I was busy. Well, cleanses uh, and protections is one of those things that you must always make time for um, if you're expecting to be practicing. And it goes back to Liam's um, comment about safe hex is the fact that at the end of the day, you should, if you are going to practice, you should be staying safe. Um, and the best way to <laughs> the best way to stay safe is to regularly cleanse. That's half. Because the fact is, and actually having an understanding of when something is dirty, when when a space is dirty, actually being able to sense that, that is a big part of actually knowing when this is necessary. Because you don't need to just do it every day. Um, obviously, for me, my best cleanses are on particular days of the week uh, for, that go for my deeper cleanses based on the fact that I know what energy is available and, and what energy I tend to spend most of my time working in. So I know when to kind of, you know, add the extra levels for that if it's part of my routine cleanse. Um, but obviously, yeah, so the, the the big part is cleanliness. So is Liam officially well, with us now? I know that before a big session and after a session, I always like to clean and cleanse my space. Yeah. I'm I'm a bit I'm trying not to trigger you. So okay, we've done the cleaning part. How about Liam does the next bit of the chatty chatty about actual protection work. So talking more about warding and protection work. Okay, so if I go into that, but I do just have something that I'm worried, wondering, is there such a thing as a magical douche spell? Oh my God. <laughs> to clean, is that practical protection? Because we hear a lot about the smudge sticks, the sage smudge sticks, the Palo Santo and all that kind of thing. But I'm thinking what people might need is a magical douche. Okay. Because that gets right up in there, doesn't it? For those hard-to-reach places. Those, those hard-to-reach energies, you know? They're a little bit too well, hard. Well, my concern about that, Liam, is is why would you need to? Because you'd only need to clean in those places if you're doing invocation, surely. I don't know. Some of us don't feel clean unless we've scrubbed every orifice and energetic <laughs> body. Some people okay. have those people. Yes, you do. So the basics of magical protection, you've got to think of things practically. So think about things in the mundane world first, you know. In the mundane world, we think, what is protection for? Well, with protection, you're trying to stop someone or something from interfering with you or interfering with your general shit, right? So when we apply that to the magical world, there are a couple of things that we need to take into account, right? I used to work in a shop, right? And there'd be lots of things on the till system, the computer system that you couldn't do. It was a security thing, a protection thing for the business. You needed a supervisor or a manager to type in a special code to do it. Now that is a form of protection, that was really fucking annoying and a lot of the time did not work properly. You've got to be thinking practically about your protection. Now, I, I see a lot of 
kits and the like that say magical protection this magical protection that bloody bloody blah, blah and what they are is they're kind of like what i was joking about earlier magical douche bomb spells they're trying to brush everything away and you've got to think do you want to get rid of everything do you want to get rid of all of the spirits that are around if you do is it um, erect all of these fortresses if you live in a bank vault you ain't gonna get a lot of visitors right so we need to think a little bit more about protection and i know that the more that you progress with magic and the more experience you have the more this kind of thing you're going to be able to tailor it to your specific needs but in general the main thing that you need to think of is protection is relevant people that go and pick up large quantities of money and the like you see them in their little armored trucks and their suits they have those armored suits on for a reason because they're a target it makes sense you know they're doing their job i don't think these people go to tesco's or as or sainsbury's or waitrose in all that get up because it's not really important so you need to think from a protection perspective what's the negative connotations of the sorts of protection that you're using if you're smudging everything a is that even gonna work b how does it work and then c the knock-on effects of that because you know for every cause there's an action whatever something like that hello everyone I see you guys are putting up like hello comments and that we're not really responding but hello everyone that's had hello and hello everyone that has not said hello so a lot of the time like with general spell work things I think go to cookie cutter so with the cookie cutter kind of stuff I'm seeing a lot of a copy and paste cookie cutter get out of a, a thing. Someone on television does it. Someone on social media posts about it. So you copy it. I do understand that to a certain extent. Because what I understand is when you look at someone else and they you think they know a little bit, you might copy them because they know a little bit and what works for them might work for you. What you do need to remember, though, is that there's an awful lot of people giving a bad advice on DIY out there, right? And there's a lot of people are giving a bad advice on uh, magic out there as well. And if you're a beginner, you're probably not really going to understand which is good advice and which is bad advice. Now, things such as Paolo Santo and those smudge sticks and things like that you see in the New Age, the little Tibetan Tibetan singing bowls that I don't even, well, they're not really Tibetan, are they? They're not really an actual no. thing. They're just but something that are flogged to tourists. Not really a cultural history there, just some crap that's flogged to tourists and that yoga teachers seem to like. Um, this kind of thing is copy and paste. Because if I say to you, how does that sage smudge stick work? and you're unable to give me an answer, then that kind of shows that you've copy and pasted it. If you are able to give me an answer, and then I say, you know, okay, under this situation, what would you do differently? You know, you've got something a little bit bigger. Maybe you've got, I don't know, some spirit of the Croatia or something, some demon, some bad thing. Yeah, manifests, and you say, what are you going to do if that happens? And they say, I get me rosemary or me sage smudge stick, sorry, or me this or me that, and say, I'm going to do that. It's probably going to laugh in your face and then eat you. So, you know, you've got to kind of think, how do these things work? So what I think, Chris, is if we go through the basics of the cookie cutter stuff and talk about how they're kind of supposed to work first, and then we move on to actual fucking protection magic. Because Sounds good. The, the the smudge sticks and the ingredients and things like that is very basic, but a lot of people get confused over it because what they think, and you can blame the books for this, you know, fiction and TV programs and that, they think, oh, magical ingredient, it just magically works, you know? And there's something that you've got to be very careful because they say that with the crystals when, oh, I buy the crystal, yeah, and I put it in my pocket because the crystal book says yeah. if I put this in my pocket, my cancer goes. And it's kind of like, yeah. oh, 
yeah, maybe not a great idea. That's you simple. also see this marketed with supplement companies. You say, oh, if you take this supplement, you'll be all of a sudden much healthier and much better and the like. And you're thinking, well, technically, science says, science says it. But you've got to think, well, technically, if I walk to the end of the street, that will help me lose weight. It will help me lose weight. Will that walk to the end of the street be enough to show any form of weight loss whatsoever? Probably not. Will that supplement that you're taking enough in enough dosage, the right thing, assuming that is even the thing that it says on the thing, on the box, because often it isn't. Um, is that enough to actually make any difference whatsoever? Possibly not. This is a magical protection that you're using. Is it enough? A, has it even been fucking switched on? But B, B, is it enough to actually do what you're trying to do? Now, the idea from my perspective of the old sage smudge deck, excluding the fact that it's been stolen from other someone else's culture um, with not really much idea of the ins and outs of it. And I'm not saying cultural misappropriation is a bad thing. I'm not saying you can't see someone else and then adapt it and take that and be inspired by other people. But there's one thing to be said for watching an electrician take a light down and then you trying to copy it, not realizing that before he did that, he switched the power off. Because you can see what might happen there, can't you? You think you know what you're seeing, but actually you don't there was a something else when he went out the room yeah he did something on a psychic level on a magical level that you necessarily can't see if you're a beginner or your psychic development isn't quite up to scratch yet there might be things going on that you don't see what you might be seeing is is get the, the smudge stick and then go like that because that's what they all do on the paranormal shows and the like so what we're talking with that kind of thing with the smudge stick is, is reinforcing be gone Liam be gone an energy we're reinforcing an energy right so it's a lot like because at the end of the day it is scent and it is smoke and the like it's a lot like these air fresheners so if you go into the science of a lot of the air fresheners a lot of these air fresheners you buy mask scents they cover them up right some of them are odor eliminators and kind of get rid of uh, get rid of odor, but a lot of them cover them up. So the idea essentially for your sage smudge stick is that sage, of course, may give off a certain energy, but you're filling the room or the area or the space with that specific energy, and you're pushing out that energy. So anything that isn't quite comfortable in that energy is going to either decide to vacate or get pushed away okay um it's like okay the current energy in the room is one that makes this specific spirit really likes it and is manifesting there really really easily when you have something like a fish fish fishes get on really well in the water but what happens if I go away and I drain all the water? So if a spirit is in the room and it's manifesting really easily, what if I get rid of the energy that that spirit needs to manifest or the energy that that spirit likes or feeds off of and replace it with something that the energy is not, okay? Um, so you've got to kind of think of it visually as, yes, the smoke and the scent and that is dissipating is going through the room but it's filling that room up yeah so what you've got to be thinking about is depending on what you're deciding to fill that room up with is going to depend, to depend on the sort of energy that you're using and i say is a go-to because it's stolen essentially they think blah 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 i will do some magic and I know what I'll do. I'll do this thing because it looks cool. And all those people use Sage. I'll use Sage. And what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll do that. I'll write a book about it. And then it'll get copy and pasted a hundred times by the same publishing company, Llewellyn. Um, and then all of a sudden it becomes a thing. And then someone comes along and thinks, well, all of this is a thing. I'm going to stock this in my witchcraft shop. I'm going to fly it in super cheap, you know, all of that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden everyone's doing it. So... 
you know you've got to be a little bit careful with what you're doing you've got to understand the system that you're working why you're doing it and then you've also got to think about what it is that you're putting into the air what it is that you're putting in as that kind of thing now that is protection really i think chris it's more cleansing isn't it so yeah we're still talking about that cleansing. Like, that is getting rid of all of the fat that you shoved and threw down the or poured down the drain you know it's a clogging up and you can feel mm, that drain when i pour the washing up bowl out it's taking a little longer to go in maybe it's all of those like well, that fat I kept pouring down from all those meals I've been cooking, right? Maybe it's that. So I might do a cleanse. I might send a load of chemicals down and cleanse it out before it becomes a problem. So with the cleansing, a lot of the time, you're waiting till after there's something there, after it's a problem, and then re-establishing and pushing out the energy in the form of burning. Yeah. Or you're thinking, oh, I need a regular cleanse. Things, energy is kind of their stuff building up. I need that kind of push out um i think so, yeah. before we move so to, on we might need so a, to break a two seconds to break it down when you are smudging something you are like liam said filling that space the whole way the way in which smudging works is to smother so it is to fill the space and push out whatever it is that is in that space so when you are pushing you when you are you are moving um an energy that you do want you know the smudge stick the energy that you want from the smudge stick is being forced into the space and the idea behind smudging is involved is filling that space to the point that it pushes everything you don't want out of the space so that's how how smudging is designed to work so when you're you're forcing an energy in it to push everything out yeah. So, what, like I said, the danger that you have there is what Liam was getting at, is that what are you pushing out? Are you wanting to push everything out? Because if you're going around waving your, your smudge stick going, I want it all gone, then don't be surprised when you have a black hole for a few weeks uh, and where other energies are tr trying to then fill that space up again. So, you know, you need to understand that that is to push something out You've still got to fill that space and maintain that space yeah. afterwards. So are nature you filling it with a different kind of vacuum. energy? Yeah, nature abhors a vacuum. So, you know, at that point, you are, you have got an empty space or a space full of smoke, uh, which is why it's really important that when you are smudging that you have open windows uh, or doors in order to let the smoke out for safety reasons, but also from the fact that that is the visual this with smudging that is a a type of sympathetic magic you are forcing it out um which is very different to working with say a besom where you are brushing dirt out it is a physical motion of pushing energy out, you know bad energy out of a space those are two ways of cleaning cleansing a space that you will cons you will con yeah, constantly see in all sorts of uh, you know paranormal magic kind of programs that is exactly what it's doing it's about pushing bad out either by filling the space with with something else smudging or by forcing the energy out in an outward brushing motion um pushing energy out of the space so you know like i said it's why most people will only smudge like liam says after something bad has happened or after a certain energy that you don't like is filling up a space so you don't normally in normal practice smudge before unless you are trying to empty your space ready for say a particular kind of practice so you know it's not it's smudging is not something you would do normally as a kind of routine practice that is normally a preparation of sacred space and the reason for that is because you're about to fill that space with a type of energy therefore there is no need for you to consider the problem of um vacuums and energy coming in because you don't routinely clean a space with a smudge stick that's not it's not what it's designed to do 
So, you know, someone that is going to smudge or burn incense every day, um, all they're doing is em emptying a space that is open for anybody to go and move in. Um, but anyway, sorry, next bit. We'll, we'll have to, let's elaborate on that and really hammer the point home in the form of what you might see people doing so it makes a little bit more sense. Because obviously you're talking about pushing this, you're talking about pushing energies and spirits and that out of a space by using smudging, but obviously you're filling that space with an energy which that spirit gets pushed out by, okay? Yeah. That's why you've got to remember the energy part, right? So evocation or invocation incense is still incense it's still stuff that's filling a room but it's filling a room with a specific energy the difference here is that the smudge stick will be comprised and made of things that's supposed to get rid of specific energies and the evocation invocation incense is designed to fill the room with things that make it easier for the a spirit or certain energies to manifest okay so it's literally if you want to get rid of the fish you fill the tank with air yeah if you want the fish to come you will fill the tank with water hopefully you kind of see the difference there so if you had some scummy fish about drain the tank down smudge it cleanse it then if you want pretty fish you would fill it with the salt water. So you'd use a specific type of invocation, ritual or incense or whatever to attune the tank, the environment, whatever, to that specific type of energy that that spirit lives in, its habitat. Fill it with salt water or the pretty lion fish in. You say, hello, lion fish. Go off and attack my enemy and sting them. And then they go off. And then what you do is you drain the tank down by cleansing again. And then all of a sudden you have to remember you have an empty tank. So what are you doing yeah. then when you have the empty tank? Because then it's just a waiting for something to happen. From my experience, empty tanks tend to fill with dust. Yeah. So that's super basic things. Um, and that's just common things. Now, you, you don't use sage smudge sticks, do you, Chris? And you don't use Paolo Santo or anything like that. You use rosemary smudge sticks, if you even bother to use smudge sticks at all, because we don't tend to use smudge sticks all that much. But you can understand from a teaching perspective to actually have a student use and feel the energy and construct the energy by making a bespoke smudge stick that's designed to fill a room with a bespoke specific energy for what they're wanting to do that you can see if they make that and then use that visually, you can actually see it. You can feel it energetically in the room is a brilliant teaching aid, which is why we kind of use them. But remember, you're making specific energy for a specific purpose. So Rosemary, you use that for your general light banishings because most of the time, let's be fair, if you've got a powerful spirit or a powerful practitioner fill in the room with uncomfortable energy or energy that they're not liking is probably not really going to stop them if i no. go bedtime if i go and do a fart in a room people may leave the room but they don't have to if they don't want to remember that when you're doing a lot of the smudging, you aren't really forcing it. You're just making the room and then attuning it to a specific energy that makes it uncomfortable for the bad thing that's there. If the bad thing wants to, if it's strong enough, it will stick around, which is why basic protection like smudging and that, when you see people go and try to exercise people and houses with this, the spirit might say, I tell you what, I'm going to fuck off for lunch and then I'm just going to come straight back. Or it might just decide to kick the ass of whoever's doing it. But there we go. Basics that they don't understand. I just go, I'll just, just follow you home, home instead. Yeah, that also happens. Hilarious. Um, so, yeah, why don't you talk about a specific type of smudge stick that people probably aren't used to with, and why you've made rosemary ones and that kind of thing? Because it works on a couple of different levels, doesn't it? Yeah, so um, for me, I choose I choose rosemary, particularly because 
it's something that I work and know and grew up with. So, you know, it's not because all the books by, um, you know, Scott Cunningham tell you that you can substitute Rosemary for anything. It's not though, it's not that. Um, the whole point of the fact is that this not is not just any rosemary, this is rosemary that's been cultivated in my parents' home for 20 years um, that I've personally tended and, and processed and looked after for those 20 years. So, you know, for me, it's a case of I have a very specific bond with rosemary as a plant. Um, and we won't go into plant allies today, but we could do something about that in the future if if people feel that that would be something that they would benefit from and uh, we could do a whole month's worth of herbals it's that it would take forever but it is just a case of you know yes rosemary is one of those perfect um you know one that you'll find in every set of correspondences that says it's for protection um but it for me it works in a very specific kind of way so um in the same way that they joke around um you know loosely joke about cats sitting in both <laughs> in both worlds uh, and being able to interact with the astral rosemary is specifically good at astral so you know it's good at penetrative work um, and by that i mean you know it's very good at breaking into someone's mind uh, opening up to possibilities all those sorts of things that make rosemary really good and the main reason for that is it's got camphor oil in um which is part of the woody part that makes that you know gets the really good smoke and um, why it smells so good um is that varying different plants will have different kind of levels of camphor oil um but it's it's one of those things where it is um it ha it works on various levels at the same time so there's a reason it's a personal fla favorite of mine i also like how it tastes like you know there is a big part of when you're going to choose something for protection work it should be something you enjoy so i cannot stand the smell of desert state desert sage at all um it's taken me the best part of the last year to even tolerate it living in my garden um, I had three plants die on me last year because me and Sage do not get on. So there is a there is a relationship that is wi built within the arrangement that I have. And when I ask Rosemary to do something like this, I you know it's working on a spiritual and astral level as well as working on a physical one. So you know the kind of the sympathetic magic of it pushing and. Um, that energy out of that space um you know it is a it is a connection that me and that plant particularly have so for you it might you know if you happen to be really well bonded with desert sage i don't see how you would be um unless you grew up in california or somewhere that was desert like i don't see how you would have that natural connection with that specific kind of plan so you know the main reason we go on and on and on about desert sage is because most of it's acquired illegally even the stuff that is shipped around the world um so you know do be careful because it is one of those native plants that is being uh cultivated it has been kind of taken from the wild in in large such large quantities that it's it's becoming more and more scarce and actually often what is being sold as desert sage is not desert sage so you know there is that kind of if you've gone and picked it from your garden or somebody else's garden that you know then there is more chance of you going okay well i know what that is i know where it came from and um, and i know it's not being cooked with something else in order to stuff it and fill it up better um or to change the way that it burns or that it's been stolen from somewhere so you know a big part of it is that um but largely it's because i feel personally if you are asking an ingredient to protect you um are you going to just ask anything that some book told you to do so if i said here you go here's this cattle prod that liam made um the question you would be asking is okay one do i need that kind of weapon 
<laughs> Two, do I trust that Liam knows what he's doing in order to manufacture said weapon? Um, and do I trust that he's, even if he does normally manufacture that well, is he going to manufacture it well for you? So, you know, has he got evil intentions? <laughs> has he got <laughs> intentions that mean that actually, even though it would work for everybody else, it's not going to work for you? So, you know, particularly when it comes to your protection magics and your cleansings, I think this should be a personal relationship as best as possible with what you are doing. So you're not just picking anything just because a book says or because you've seen it on some Instagram. You know, you are you are picking something that you you know is readily available because you want it to be available all the time. You don't want it to be something that you can't get hold of. And is it something that you enjoy? So for me, like, like I say, I use it in my cooking. Uh, I use it in cleansing. I use it in all sorts of bath salts uh, and things like that. Like it, it, I could, I will never get bored of it. Um, you know, and that's a big part of it. Like again, I wouldn't personally use lavender, but that's because I don't particularly like the smell of lavender. It also makes me daisy you know dozy and and whatever so uh, you're not going to want something that relaxes you necessarily when you're trying to build a wall um so you know i think the next part beyond that is kind of the danger with fortresses i think is it another one um so kind of building on that kind of vacuum sustainability part. with the rosemary and the things that you're looking at in books with things that get more popular if there's not a huge amount of it in to begin with when it gets more and more popular it does have a negative impact on the environment and then obviously going into what you're talking about but also um a problem is with what do you what what are you filling that with once you're done you clear it all the space you fill it up with the energy you want to get the work done you cleanse it then what are you filling it up with so another thing that hammers chris's um i think a methodology for how you create your smudge sticks you go for very simple things and just use one ingredient normally but think a bit like this so the preset energy of the place that you're in we're assuming it's your home will be the energy mix of the things that are there you replace the energy that's in your home it should be a blend of all the people and things that live there the cat the dog you your kids husband wife whatever so if you're creating a thing much like dogs and animals and like mark their territory by urinating and you're not going to do that because your house won't smell nice but however if you go around your house and you think okay so where where are the energy centers here in my son's room funnily enough the predominantly energy in there is my son in my room the predominant energy is there is mine and my partners in the living room it seems to be a little bit of a mix of everyone outside in the back garden it seems to mainly be the dog you know all that kind of thing you might not be able to pick that up what you're trying to do is you're trying to flood your fortress house whatever with a basic energy that shows everything else that it's yours so how you might do that in the form of a smudge stick in order to re-establish this is to think okay i'm going to be using my things needs to be burnable but i'm going to be using something that is going to be full of our energy so from the perspective if you're using a herbal approach to herbal magic which you probably will if you're making some sort of smudge stick you could look at the plants and herbs in your garden and in your kitchen cupboards if you eat the herbs in your herb garden the chances are that is in your energy your field and therefore will be around you so what you could do is to take all of those herbs that you and your family eat and that you grow in the garden and to make a, a smudge stick out of those because you're using the energy that's already there that's combined with yours to kind of up the level 
turn the volume up and push that out to make sure that you're establishing your personal environment. You're marking your territory because the smudge sticks and that kind of thing are flooding the area with a specific energy. It ain't going to work against big bad things that come a knocking on the door because do you know what? They only come knocking on the door to scare you before they smash through the door, okay? So you're thinking about, yes, it will put a lot of things off, much like those little gnats when you go to Scotland are put off by certain essential oils and the like, you know? It's just getting rid of the slight negativity, the stagnation, the stagnant energy, that isn't really sentient, but a lot of people confuse it as that. Um... What would we think about, uh, I don't know what they're called, poltergeist activity, that kind of thing. You can get a lot of that, that stagnant energy that builds up and goes crazy. Um, that kind of thing. Or low-level minimum wage workers of the astral world. Nitwit spirits that are very powerful but quite annoying. That way we'll probably get rid of those sorts of things. But big things and other practitioners is not really going to fix the situation. So you kind of need to think taking that approach and you were talking about as well or you were even about to go into i'm thinking kind of protection fortresses the like the physical yeah. thing so something like oh dear what's it going to get can you guess what i've got it's a popular one especially around here what's that the pentagram no. <laughs> oh, a horseshoe. Okay. Horseshoe. Some people have it that way. Some people have it that way. But people will often put them above their doors. And they'll put them above the doors because they think if you put a horseshoe above your door, it's some sort of magical protection. It's another copy and paste thing. A lot of people don't know why they do it. They just do it because they see other people doing it or as a tradition. So you need to think if you're going to use something like this or you're going to use another symbol, or something. I mean, this is made of iron. So you may be thinking that I'm going to use the properties of iron, I'm going to use the symbology, and I'm going to use something else to make this magic work. But remember, you need to be able to say how the magic works. Okay. You need to remember that kind of thing. Um, we've got a couple of questions. Do you want to do the questions or do you want to go on for this? And I, take I just want to finish this point and then, yeah, we'll go to questions. Yeah. So the, the, the one bit people seem to kind of overlook is they do go straight to this word fortress. Um, so this kind of my house is my, you know, my home is my castle, that sort of thing. Um, and it's one of those things that needs to kind of make sense to you, which is lots of people think that, you know, big walls keep things out so but what they tend to New forget eggs like the eggs don't they light egg oh yeah surround eggs. yourself with a ball of egg energy so well, the, the like boundary they seem to forget that the boundary not only keeps things out it also stops things uh, you know keeps things from getting in um it also stops things from getting out so you know this is this is a thing so, you know, you shouldn't be building an airtight container. Air <laughs> airtight container will mean when the oxygen runs out, you guys die too. And what people forget is actually when you're building a grid system, um, that you need to be considering the fact that there should be a way for energy to flow through. Otherwise, you've always got the issue of cutting yourself off. So there are times when you want to cut yourself off, but they shouldn't be part necessarily of your permanent protections. There should always be a kind of on off emergency switch that you will need um, when shit gets bad. Um, but your general protections should be more like the mosquito net. They let air go through, but they catch the bugs on the outside. Then you just have to cleanse them every now and again in order to make sure that there's still that free flow of energy. Because this is what tends to happen is people build themselves 
um, they build themselves these walls and either the walls are too thick so they can't get energy freely throwing or they forget to clean the bugs off so all those things that are connect you know hitting on the outside aren't getting in air is still flowing but they're forgetting to cleanse and this is why protection and cleansing are two sides of this thing that needs to always be kind of working uh, in tandem all the time so the reason i bring this up is because lots of people think of you know putting walls up and uh, keep everybody safe or you know they start working and they've got families um and they've got small children at home and all that kind of thing um and obviously ways around that is you don't necessarily want people to be bothering you at certain times so you know you start to build you think about the when you want certain types of protection so for example if you've got sensitive children who are kind of coming into their coming into their gifts as they're getting older then you'll need to consider when do they need to be protected well they don't need to be bothered at school so you send them with something that is going to protect them while they're at school so they can focus on their studies but then each uh, you know the time you don't really want to protect them and that's probably going to find this weird for me to say is night time um and the main reason for that is your dreams are there to process everything that you've learned that day and they're also your your kind of playground for you to play quite safely um so you know yes you have to deal with the outcome which is normally you know might be nightmares or something like that but you don't want them to be cut off while they sleep um you know there is nothing worse than locking you know locking someone in a uh, in a vault when they're supposed to be exploring um and i just kind of wanted to add that in because i know kind of lots of parents get all jittery about you know what they see and what they do and all that kind of thing um you know and by all means always you know allow yourself to have a panic button of some description and go well, actually you can wear what you wear at school and it'll stop it but at the end of the day they should only they should need to be able to switch that on and off when they want to not starve them of their development so we just kind of wanted to throw that in yeah i think protection with the fortress idea what we need to remember is that it tends to work better if protection's reactive and is activated yeah. for a reason so you'll find that a lot of magical practitioners or have multiple or oh, i feel like i want to sneeze but i don't want to <laughs> Ugh. multiple layers of protection what people confuse is that they have a super layer and then they think I've discovered something new, so I can have an even more super supreme layer, and then I can add an even more yeah. bigger one. It's kind of like the idea of I'll have a concrete wall, and then I'll have a steel wall, and then I'm going to have some sort of a razor wire in front of it all kind of thing. Not yeah. really how protection often works. Protection often works a little bit more smart, intelligent way. So the standard protections that you'll kind of see are relevant. Okay, they're relevant to what you're protecting against. So the standard protection that you'll probably always find that people get confused over can be seen quite easily in things like Feng, um, feng Shui, is it? The free yeah. flow of energy that Chris was talking about. You're talking about if you've got a stagnant smell in a room, opening the window, or you've burnt the cooking, you open the window, you open the door, and then that flows through, it pushes, it's constant flow. Yeah, so having and stopping things from building up to start with, you want a flow of energy. So sealing the hatches is not really important to happen all of the time. You know, you don't have that all the time. You would have that specifically. Even an old fashioned fortress or castle, they don't have that it all sealed up all of the time they can see it up if they need to but it's not all sealed up all of the time right the drawbridge ain't always up it's generally down okay yeah. so you've got to think logically about what it is you're trying to protect against and then factor that in and that will be dependent on what you're working with what sort of attack you think that you'll be under 
So the only thing that generally most practitioners will have is some kind of way to keep all the energy moving so nothing clogs up and then relevant things that activate when they're needed. So when they're needed in terms of you activate them or some system that gets set up specifically. The only changes to that that you might see as permanent methods of protection may be something like this that some people put in. So for example, if you have, and I'll use this as an example because a uh, a couple of you will probably be aware of the person I'm thinking about in terms of those utilize this very type of magic. If you know that the neighbor next door pushes out a lot of negative energy or a lot of energy is a basically a dickhead, right? You could use as a form of protection a barrier. You're not necessarily gonna make that barrier go all around your house and seal you in. What you're gonna do is if the energy is coming from that direction, flowing through the boundary wall, the garden fence, whatever, is you're just going to establish a block. When you go on the beach, some people take a wind block with them to stop all of the sand and the wind from coming from a specific direction. OK, what you don't do is seal yourself into a tent, because if you seal yourself in a tent, you're not really experiencing the beach, are you? So you take the relevant types of protection. That's what you've got to remember. There needs to be a reason for your protection, okay? And it says a lot about you if you're <laughs> sealing up all of the hatches constantly because you need to ask yourself, wait a minute, am I under doing that because I'm scared to death of everything? Am I doing that because I've been told wrong and that's what I've been told to do? Or am I doing that because I'm under constant attack? If you're under constant attack, then that's the time to stop offending and to start getting rid of the fucking thing that is constantly attacking you. Okay, so you need to wipe that out. Sometimes the great defense is a great offense. So if a someone won't let up and keeps attacking you and it gets to the point where you just deflect it, but then if they keep trying to work around, keep trying to work around, keep trying to work around, probably just better to wipe them out at that point. You know, a lot of defense magic that I tend to work anyway is often done because it's some energy or something that's been sent by accident. So it's either some spirit that don't really understand humans or this world and that. So they're trying to manifest and cause inner trouble. They don't understand that right? But it's causing trouble. So I just say, mm, we'll change the frequency here so you can't get in. Or as students and the like that might be doing some sort of work, maybe they're practicing something, maybe they're practicing something else, or people generally around the vicinity, you know, that has a negative impact, because there's a link there that you might decide, okay, I'm going to block. Then there are some people that much like a child, if a child comes and throws a tantrum and punches you, you don't knock that child out. You kind of laugh. You kind of think, oh, bless, he's trying to hit me. Because it's just like, mm -hmm. a, and it doesn't really hurt. So when some magical practitioners do that, they may be attempting to hurt you. But generally speaking, I wouldn't, I wouldn't retaliate. The general defense that you'd put up to deal with that would be a defense, not an offense. Okay, so some kind of shield work. But again, remember, reactive unless there is a reason, which I think was what you were trying to say with the fortress thing, wasn't it? That's the thing to remember, kids. <laughs> so we've got some comments. Yeah, you, you're making sure that, that it is a necessary. You know, the, the, there are two reasons for it. One is you don't want to suffocate yourself and stop having access to the good, a good energy. Um, the second one is you don't see people getting the trebuchets out for a tent. What they will get the trebuchets out for is, oh, well, that big castle must be guarding something so very, very precious. So I'll go and smash through that to go and find out what's inside. Um, so, you know, um, for me, it's a case of, you know, consider what your options are. Is it necessary? Um, do my defences need to be obvious? 
or do they need to be a little bit more subtle and a bit more smart? But we won't have time to kind of go into the details of that, but just something for you to think about. So where do you want to start with these these comments, Liam? We'll just do a couple of shout outs and that. So Nigel Porter says that the, I'm watching from the North Pole tonight. Hello to the North Pole. Say hi um, to Santa. Christopher Evans, you say hi, Nigel. I said hi to Nigel because I'm not rude. Cherry says, when I meet someone and they are saying blah, blah, I listen carefully and take to keep probably 10% because I would rather listen to my guides. But I do believe in the fact we should listen to some carefully because spirit often speak through others to tell me something I need to know. So kind of, I suppose, advice listening to other people, that kind of thing. Um, I only smudge when it's very necessary to. Um, I find everybody has something that works for them. I don't believe it's a standard stock situation that we all have to follow each other. Each spirit is different and you have to be able to know what will work in another person's house by going through first and getting a feel for the energy. This is why obviously when it comes to teaching, we do bespoke t-shirt teaching and don't do curriculums. This is one witches and herbalists and make up potions and the like they often make it bespoke you know it is one of those things that the best thing whether it's healthcare, whether it's a interior design or what is always personal is always personal to the person there's going to be a using it in that it makes sense logic at the end of the day so translate that to the magical world as well kt veronica says about something very important it's my mistake. I said gnats when I talked about the little annoying things in Scotland. And of course, it is midges. I don't know how I got that wrong. I've been attacked in it by enough of them. Smudge before or after recharging protection or personal preference. Um, have to get, uh, go charge my phone. <laughs> okay. What Eric was saying there, Liam, actually had a question mark at the end. It was oh. a question. So, so should we go um, on with that then? <laughs> Smudge before or after recharging protection or personal preference. You need to remember, like I said, obviously because there was quite a lot of information in that. So rewatch the video. So we went into deep, you know, talk about how smudging actually works. So you've got to think before or after recharging protection. Okay, so what is the protection that you're using? You know, how does smudging work? And you've got to kind of think about that kind of thing. If I have a Is wall that's designed to deflect energy from the outside and I smudge, then I can push the energy out through that wall, but it can't get back in. If you've got some sort of a protection that is a spirit that lives in that room or in that house and you're smudging and get rid of all of the energy, then you're going to brush that spirit away, aren't you? So it will depend on the the smudge obviously understanding how smudging works and then understanding your different types of protection magic and how they work because remember it's really important that you remember this different types of sm spells have different methods behind them so they work differently okay you need to remember that defensive magic that works on the perspective of creating a shield is different than the sort of magic that involves creating a natural current that just washes things constantly. Okay, still protection, still offers some protection, but they work differently. So you'd create them differently, and then also they're going to react to things differently. Um, not everyone can smudge spray works or banging a drum so yeah this is all things that you've also got to remember when you understand the technique so if you remember the smudge technique of filling the room or the area with a specific type of energy yeah then why do you have to use smoke for that or scent you could literally you could use sound if you're able to transmit and raise and put that at specific energy in the form of sound perfectly possible to do that obviously you could speak the words, let there be light, and then there's light. 
Yeah. So the big the big one is the fact that obviously we've just covered smudging because that's the one that most people ask about. Um, we're talking just about generally about your cleanses is actually mm -hmm. understanding the process of how that works. So if you are pushing energy out to expel, you know, you are filling that space with something, whether or not that be uh, smoke, sound, uh, you know, spraying salt water, etc um you know obviously salt water works in a slightly different method which involves absorbing um so i would be a little bit more careful with the salt water one but that's just because uh salt is that purification part so you know um the same way that oust kind of grabs uh you know grabs all the molecules it still puts all those molecules on the floor they don't just magically disappear um so you know when you're spraying with something it is down so then if it's followed by you know a sweep out cleanse of some description then great um you know where you're actually clearing that away just remember that there is the physics part of everything you do in the physical um that balances with what you do in the magical so you know, but yes, you could use smells. It doesn't necessarily need to be smoke. It could be uh, essential oils or, you know, any of those things. The the concept is what's important, is that you understand how that it is emptying that space. And it's about what you put back in that space once you have cleansed something in that method, um, you know, which is why we're saying it might not be something you need to do necessarily. Um, you know, just because you've got a wall of a protection, you've gone for the Moscow, uh, mosquito net variety rather than the fortress, you've got to just figure out, OK, well, how am I cleansing the outside of this space? You know, one thing we didn't talk about, uh, which is another way of addressing that, is, OK, I'm not going to leave that carcass of that dead fly or that mosquito on the outside what I'm going to do is design a protection that eats those things. Then you don't need to worry about cleansing it as often if it's absorbing that energy and it is powering the, the protection itself. Self-renewing uh, a shell that is, you know, absorbing that space. But, you know, it really depends on how you work. Um, there's also that thing, oh, what's that other one the New Age is like? Those light, oh, light sand, things. Like and sandalwood as well is a popular one, I think, now. Um, not the ones they I was thinking about. I was thinking sand, those yeah. those pink things. What are those pink things? Himalayan rock salt. Salt lamps. Salt. salt lamps, that one. Again, they work on a basis of sucking it in to a specific place. So, you know, you've still got to cleanse that place that it is sucked into um you know it's not going to just there is going to be something that needs to be done with it mm. um but that's how salts work they are sucking um it out in order to uh, purify the space so you know how often yeah. do you have to dispose of said salt or you know how are you having to to work with that Smudging and cleaning the space is one very tiny, very tiny part of protection magic. Much like in installing a security alarm in your house is one small aspect of security. Security for the house. You may have a guard dog, which will bite anything that comes in the vicinity. You may have a protective spirit that oversees your house or looks after you does the same thing you may have locks on your door so you may have magical barriers up that protect and physically stop something from coming in you may have a cctv that you can look at so you've got kind of ideas of remote viewing and that kind of a thing you also have in forms of protection you may also have things like a cleaning schedule and really the cleaning schedule because it won't cleaning schedule protects against the bacteria buildup and that sort of thing that's really what you're talking about remember that smudging is not going to stop something coming in okay <laughs> so 
barriers and the like will help with that but at the same time it needs to be relevant barrier that you find a lot in the west country what do we have a lot of problems with in the west country the fae what do the fae not like iron why do you think they use a lot of iron in places where they have problems with the fae does that mean that because this is made of iron, that it only protects against fey? No. Does it mean that it's just the iron that does the protection? No. Swiss Army knives are more than just a knife, remember. You can make this do lots of things. Might have lots of different modes and the like. I did a video on this. Cleansings can get super complicated. The more knowledge you have, the more sophisticated and stronger your protection magic is going to be on average the approach a lot of people tend to take is to take okay what is every energy i'm aware of and can i make a protective game plan that incorporates that they come up with the four element kind of thing don't they chris so whether it's the catholics mm -hmm. or whether it's the wiccans or whether it doesn't really matter a lot of them will use four elements because they think oh okay if I can get every energy that exists in this place and categorize it as four different types of energies, if I could create a protection ritual that utilizes all of those, I can get rid of anything. Of course, that only helps if you're trying to get rid of things within the system. There are things outside of the system that that will not work on. But there we go, this is just the basics. So whether you've got a ritual, for example, splitting the earth, air, fire and water they might utilize four things for that they might say air oh I'll use some incense to represent that or smudge with that and push all of the air type energy out get rid of that or cleanse the air first then they might say oh okay fire what can i use for that candle i will light up and i will create magical protection candles and that and have part of my cleansing ceremony ritual and they think I'm running a bit behind now. Maybe I'll just combine the water and the ground together. Water is water, ground, what can we call our salt? Let's just mix the salt and the water together because I'm late for work, you know. Mix that together, I'll flick it about, that kind of thing. You're talking about taking those specific energies and pushing them out. Do I use that approach? Yes, I do, but I don't use the elements. What do I use? Well, that's just going to take too long if we do that. But I'm pretty sure I did do a cleansing and protection magic video which deconstructs ritual cleansings and how they work. I think it's in the Witchcraft Live Facebook group. So go ahead and watch that. I think I did deconstruct the... Uh, idea of using because the catholic church uses incense and light and salt water which is basically just water and salt which represents the element of earth and then the fire so they all use these kind of four element systems you see it all the time over and over again but a lot of people don't understand mm. why so i kind of deconstructed that um obviously smudge sticks generally they will use just air so you're dealing with that and when you get really into it the four elements are bollocks anyway. It's a bit more complicated yeah. than that, but we try to keep it simple by categorizing them in with four things if you're a neo pagan. Anyway, you know. I like a good purge, but more on that another time. Um are there any burning questions before we kind of head off? Um there's a mention there by um Katie Veronica there. Uh, does the shoe have to be seen or can it be behind something? It depends on who it's there for. Um, so, you know, it was a cultural reason for you to see it, um, for you to actually see that that place was safe. Um, if you're the only person that needs to, is lit in that space, who would understand why it's there, you don't necessarily need it to be seen. Um, but that's a personal preference there that really it really doesn't matter what matters is what it represents and what it's actually doing um if you don't understand what the horseshoe is there for or how it works then it's pointless you using it 
but you know that's what one of those things say. if you don't understand it you'd be able to answer that question if you understand how it worked okay so if you don't understand then you need to understand how it works or you can cheat an experiment so see what it does with it on show see what it does when it does when it isn't on show so you need to think how does it actually work now i did one of these on the thof tv on our youtube channel thof tv um i used one of these horse shows to create a magical boundary okay and that one was one of those things that was supposed to just repel things that were in its vicinity essentially so it was designed to be put in a room or in a space that had you know that area to protect that area to push things away from that area obviously i didn't just use that i used an oil as well to go with it um i will probably is somewhere in the witchcraft live group i think but i will bounce that post to the top again um because there's a couple of people that are asking about really old posts so in the witchcraft live facebook group i'm gonna reorganize them all and sort out in the guide section at the top um but do we have any more final questions um because if you want to go into this in more detail you've really got two choices to make you either go and try and do your own research and experimentation because that's really good and you should go and do that or if you want the cheat sheets you can always join the thoth witchcraft patreon can't they chris to learn to yeah. your maths. and that'll give you um, an opportunity to work with us one to one Mm. yeah so but yeah just to kind of you know fill that space while we're waiting to see if there's any last more questions um is that kind of you know when you're approaching this who is it designed to keep out so from a physical point of view you're not planning to necessarily keep uh humans out so it doesn't need to physically look like a wall um the same with the with the horseshoe um it's not designed to keep horses out so it's designed to keep a particular kind of spirit out therefore it actually where it is is what's important not necessarily just to give you some hints as to how that works there but you should go and do your own research is where it's kept and how it is kept is designed about its proximity to what it is trying to uh, you know how it works to keep it out not that what shape it is or what it looks like um it just so happened that obviously culturally those things were available um you know if i remember rightly there was an important part of it that the horseshoe should obviously be from a particular kind of horse so it would have actually have been used first uh, you can't go horseshoe. this one is a huge yeah horseshoe. it's got one of the nails still in yeah so you can't I don't know if you can see that you can't go and buy a fresh one from a farrier um a farrier and well, then you could. if you designed the spell to work that way you see because that's the thing this is the copy and paste isn't it chris mm -hmm. this is what people get confused by because when you there are certain things like the smudge stick and like or like things that you will see the work on a specific principle but that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to utilize that magical object or charm or whatever with that magical principle in height you can adapt it and you can change it yeah. obviously i change well i'm talking horseshoe. from a historical point of view from a uh, historical point of view they yeah. had to be used mm. then you're talking about the the procedure and the tradition of going through that um yeah. specific but yeah that. but whatever you use like liam should said uh, liam said is the fact that actually you should know how the principle works and mm. why you selected the ingredient whether or not that be a kicked horseshoe um you know there is that part for me that i like um i remember there was a certain part of one of the laws anyway um that said it had to be a a shoe <laughs> you know that you couldn't either you could or sh you shouldn't or could only use um shoes that had been kicked off 
Right. They weren't ones that were taken off the horse. Um, so I can't remember. I can't remember. It's that it makes more sense that it would be a sturdy one that didn't get lost. But um, that kind of found item, I quite um, so. But it's one of it's one of those things because you have strange. There are strange ideas about how you should use something broken when you're referring to the fae. So maybe you should only use a shoe that didn't work so that it was kicked off in some way. But yeah, I, I can't remember. It's not something I use. It was a long time ago. I don't remember. Hmm. I'm personally never go by the traditions because again, I'm one of those people that always likes to put my own stamp on it. So I'm always to a certain extent, I might take inspiration from traditions, but I'm one of those people which would say if you're utilizing traditional magic, i.e. copying and pasting without knowing what you're doing, that isn't magic, that isn't serious magic, that's superstition. You are copying yeah. something that was worked for someone else, hoping that it will work for you. And in the real world, that doesn't work out very well. If I have someone yeah. that I copied their diet because they look healthy, and yet they're on a really, really crazy ass weird diet because they've got something wrong with them. The chances are I'm probably not going to take that. My friend, yeah. she's on some very serious pills. I could look at those pills and think, well, they make her better. I've got a headache. I'm going to take those pills. Really, what you're talking about magically is the magical equivalent is, oh, that person's doing that thing. Don't really fucking know why they're doing it or what it works. But fuck it. I'm just going to copy it. And a lot of the time with magic, you'll get lucky and it simply won't work however sometimes yeah you yeah. do you it and it interesting results <laughs> yeah yeah so you've got to be careful remember always do something or when it, whether it, regardless of what type of magic is whether it's protection magic or what always do something when you know the principles behind it if you don't know the principles behind it remember that's experimentation experimental magic and you need to think of the risks associated with that because you are experimenting and fucking about to see what happens okay and i'm not saying you can't do that but you need to be aware that you're doing that and make it experiments and the crazy mad professor should know if they mix two chemicals together to see what happens an explosion might occur. They can't turn around and said, why did that happen? You know, which a lot of people do. A lot of people are, I mean, we get too many clients that come and say, I did this spell online and it fucked up. I did that online, it fucked up. Or I saw this and it fucked up. You know? Anyway. Most, of them are <laughs> Most of them are because you, they don't tell you how to dispose of magical use. Uh, you know, used magical yeah. dis... Yeah. To be fair... Yeah, a lot of the copy and pasters, the magic just don't work in the first place, luckily. Mm. Um, but there are a lot of ones where, uh, yeah, you get the odd one where it really is an explosion in their face. And then a lot of the time it is that they don't finish the spell or they don't start the spell. A lot of the uh, people that do the copy and pasting, of course, um, you've seen it, Chris, they do the physical aspects of the spell. They do the stuff that, they light the candle, but they don't do the extra stuff, the energetic stuff yeah. that the normal mundanes can't see. They just light the fucker and think, yeah, I lit the candle. The magic ain't no working, you know? But there we yeah. go. So I think that's it for this week. Obviously, Feisty Witches Show with us is brought to you by the Keep On Chatting Network. We do this every week at 8 o'clock, near enough 8 o'clock anyway. Um, and... I don't know what next week's uh, one will be, but keep a lookout for us. We will start posting this in the Witchcraft Live group as well. And obviously, if you do want to see past episodes of Feisty Witches, you can look it up on the Keep On Chatting YouTube channel, which you all got to subscribe to, apparently. And you can also look it up on the Keep On Chatting facebook page yeah so if you want to listen to us ramble about other shit don't ask me what because i never remember what we do these things on 
subjects and the like, but it's good stuff, you know. And if you also are in the mood for anything in general paranormal related, then also, of course, check out the Keep On Chatting YouTube channel because there's other shows on there that are of a paranormal nature. Okay, they're not as good they're as They're not this all witchy one. like us. They're not as good as this one because we are the best, you know. We are. And I say far. that Amazing. being completely unbol- unbiased. But they're almost as good as us. So worth yeah they do watching. try yeah okay all right so there we go good night everyone and goodbye <laughs>